over the last few weeks, I've been trying out a couple of different water blocks to see if I can get a bit lower temperatures out of this water cooling system that I've been running. Looking at the alpha cool block that I was using previously, I realized that it doesn't actually have any micro fins, which is a pretty big part of how both radiators and water blocks actually help to cool down chips. For anyone not totally aware, micro fins help by increasing the surface area of something and allowing either air or in this case water to flow through it and pull away more heat. It's the same reason that there are fins on radiators, it's the same reason that there are fins on the air cooling heat sinks of these laptops, and it's why uh, fin density is a big thing when people are looking at radiators and why it's something that manufacturers brag about whenever they're able to increase it. So it can make a big difference, and in this case, it also did make a pretty solid difference that I'm very happy about. Looking around for a RAM block that had microfins wasn't very successful, because obviously RAM doesn't actually get very hot, so any block that is used for RAM is usually trying to be as smooth as possible so that it's not taking away any of the flow for the rest of a cooling loop on an actual desktop. I found this borrow block that does have some microfins, picked it up to give it a shot, uh, I did need to cut off the sides of the block to get it to actually fit into the chassis and have a way to be pressed into the heat sink, similar to the Alpha Cool. So just a little bit of cutting there, and it was on the outside of the O-ring, so no issues with it. Slapped it in, had pretty good gains, but then I also started looking into server CPU water cooling blocks and came across this Iceman block for an AMD SP5. It's much bigger than the borrow block, has more cooling fins inside on the cold plate, but it actually weighs a lot more too. It is solid copper and made for a full-size Threadripper CPU, not for RAM on a desktop. Needed to take away the mounting screws, which were just held in by a clip, and then I also actually needed to drill a little bit of the cold plate to make clearance for one of the GPU screws on the laptop's heatsink. Initially, I went a little bit too far, had a small pinhole leak, got it plugged up with some solder, now it should be a good to go. Plugged it from the inside, not the outside, so that way as the water is going through, the pressure will push the plug into place, if anything, instead of pushing it out of place and into the laptop. But at this point, I mean, if it leaks, it's going to leak. That's, it's, that's something I accepted months ago on this thing, so hoping for the best. The big benefit for why I wanted to try out this Threadripper is because looking here at this picture of the laptop with the heatsink installed, the Threadripper block will actually cover every cooled component on the laptop's heatsink, instead of how previously it was really just covering the CPU and GPU die directly, and then the rest of everything would just get passive cooling from the water block. This covers all of the VRAM, all of the chips, and both dies on the entire heatsink. So instead of having to cool it from just the regular passive from the heatsink, it will actually have contact with the cold plate of the water block, hopefully improving temperatures more, um, if not on the die, at least just getting it so that those chips are at a similar temperature instead of being a little bit above or getting left behind because the fans aren't turned on. One thing that I did run into while testing all three of these blocks back to back is that there was a noticeable increase going from the Alpha Cool block to the Borrow block, and from between the Alpha Cool and the Threadripper. However, between the Borrow and the Threadripper blocks, there's actually not much of an improvement to be had. Um, I think what's going on here is just based on the way that I'm using the laptop's heatsink basically as an IHS for a desktop. We're likely running into a bottleneck here for what the heatsink can pull away uh, doing it this way. I think the only benefit that you would get at this point to get better cooling would genuinely just be to go full direct die, making a custom cold plate to mount onto the laptop, and then making it so that that cold plate would actually cover the rest of the chips as the standard heatsink would. But at that point, there would be no more air cooling, the laptop would be a desktop, or you'd have to just drag a radiator around everywhere. And that is not the goal of this project. It is to retain the air cooling and have water cooling as an option. So I will not be doing that at this time. Getting into the gameplay, I am only going to compare the Alpha Cool Block to the Threadripper. The Borrow Water Block, again, was better than the Alpha Cool Block. 
but it was only about one to two degrees worse than the Threadripper, so I don't think that including all three in the video would really serve a purpose other than just to make the video a bit longer. So to kind of keep it quick, I'm just going to only do the Alpha Cool and the Threadripper. Getting into Armored Core here, one thing I do want to point out is that the second clip is post shunt mod. So the GPU temperature is about the same as the original, just because it is pulling more wattage. And it's actually going to be the same case when we get into the next clip for Dead Space as well, where it's pulling about 50 watts more in the Dead Space clip for the I Iceman block. Must have heard that landing. Be proud, Chen. You gotta see her in one piece. Johnson might disagree. What? You're off in about the first round. Tonight. I wouldn't mind something to city matters, especially on CEC's tab. Super happy with the gains that we got here from going to the Iceman block. I do think that if you were going to replicate this, the Borrow block would be a good spot to stop. The Iceman block was a bit large on the uh, cold plate, so I did need to take some material off of it. On top of that, again, I had to drill part of it to get clearance for one of the screws on the heatsink compared to the Borrow block where it's just two cuts on the acrylic and you're good. Not to mention that the borrow block, if you can find it, because I think it's discontinued now, was about half the cost of the Iceman block, since one is just a cold plate and acrylic, and the other is solid copper. So I do think that the borrow block or a similar RAM block with actual microfins is a safe place to stop. As far as this project, it's looking like it's wrapped up now. I don't see this going anywhere, uh, just because, again, if I did want to improve it, it would most likely be having to completely remove the air cooling, and that is not something I'm going to do, because I actually do use my laptop on the go. It goes with me in my backpack, if I go to work, if I had to go get my car worked on the other day, take it with me everywhere. So definitely not getting rid of the air cooling, even if it makes the, the water a bit better. Thank you for everyone who stuck through the video, and maybe eventually another project will come up, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you for your time.